The podcast that you're about to listen to may cause some listeners to consider shaving off their eyebrows. How you doing, everybody? Been a long time. How you been? Uh, How's life treating all you guys out there in the world? I guess it's been treating me okay, you know? Um, I haven't done a podcast since December, so I guess that would mean that this would be the first podcast of the year, uh, 2024. And, uh, you know, there's a reason for that, I guess. You know, uh, that spark, you know, that flame, that desire to make a podcast, you know, sit down and talk, it really hasn't kind of hit me. And uh, I had kind of told myself uh, for a while now that I wasn't going to really be talking about this thing that I want to talk to you about today. But I think that it's important for me to talk about this today because I think that in a lot of ways right now, uh, emotionally, I guess, or, you know, even maybe in some ways, even creatively, those kinds of things, I'm, I'm kind of paralyzed, you know, emotionally, you know, I'm not going to talk about this. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm going to wait because I, you know, I think that what the story I was about to tell was just so bad, you know, the series of events that were so bad that I just, I don't want to ruin everybody's day, but I guess the long and the short of it is, uh, I lost a very good friend of mine, um, more than a friend to, uh, suicide and um, basically I, I it was somebody that was extremely important to me in my life and uh, not my wife you know she's still with me don't worry you know but uh, I am in a state of mind and a state of heart really where I'm stuck, you know, I feel like I'm stuck, like my, my heart is broken in a way that it has never been broken before, um, because, you know, this friend of mine that I lost was about a year older than me, and it wasn't quite the same, you know, as losing my parents, like my parents were elderly, they were older and yeah, it was sad and it still is, you know, but this situation that happened not too long ago, um, man, it was really, really, uh, a surprise, you know, um, nobody saw it coming or expected it. I certainly didn't. And, uh, with that comes you know, a whole host of thoughts and memories and would have, should have, could have, you know, what ifs and all that. And the questions of why, you know, why somebody does that kind of thing. And, oh, you know, I have to even like nowadays, I have to be careful about how I talk about it because I might trigger somebody or like YouTube might some do some bullshit like, you know, because I'm talking about it. You know, so that was like another reason to not do it. It was really almost like this. Okay. Like I didn't feel I could do another podcast until I got this thing off my mind and off my chest, you know, but I didn't feel like I should, I still don't feel like I should really be talking about it yet. I don't really think I'm ready to, but I just can't do anything podcast wise until I talk about this at least a little bit you know because I really am stuck like I am emotionally in a place where I never 
have been before. You know, I've never had my heart broken by somebody that I loved this much. I mean, this was a very, very close friend to me all of my life, you know. And uh, to have that situation you know, end the way that it did, it just, it couldn't have been worse. You know, I've been thinking about that. You know, when someone does that to themselves, you know, they take their own life. Uh, it's really the ultimate act of selfishness because they leave behind all these people that love them, you know, and uh, there are no answers to the questions. You know, there's nothing, there's no way, there is no way to answer the questions that I have. You know, it's so awful. Uh, and I find myself, as time goes by, you know, th this situation I'm talking about happened back in July. And at first it was shocking, at first it was sad, and all those things, you know? But as time goes by, I think, and I, this is how it feels so far anyway, right now, um, the wound is getting bigger. You know, it's not healing. It's getting bigger as each day passes by, you know? And um, this person was so important to me my whole life. <laughs> you mean, like, since I was a child, we were friends, you know, and we loved each other. I mean, I, just, I can't say that enough. I mean, it's so so difficult to even consider I'm saying it, you know, and like I was saying, as each day passes by, each month passes by, this wound on my heart and on my brain, on my soul, really, is not getting better. It's getting worse, and uh, I have to consider that, you know, like, what is the future really like for me? You know, when does this kind of trauma, you know, this kind of sadness, like, wow, is that even a, the word for it? Sadness? It's beyond sadness. I don't, I don't even think they have a word for it yet, like how I feel right now, you know? But I am creatively kind of like stuck. I'm like paralyzed. I'm like... I, you know, it really is something I'm contending with. And yeah, you know, I've managed to, you know, put together an album. Uh, you, some of you may have been checking out called Days Away, a new PC3 album. But, you know, that album is a tribute to this person. I mean, this, this, this situation I'm in is, it's like trying to come out of me. You know, like I've got to get it out. And I guess that's kind of why I'm doing this podcast today. You know, I didn't really want to do a podcast. I certainly didn't want to be talking about this. At least not in detail, but here it is. You know, I, I, I have to say it. Like if you, the listener right now, were sitting with me in the room I'm in, this is what I would be talking about. You know, because I need to talk about it. I need to process this experience because I'm afraid it's going to eat me alive. You know, um, it's really, I mean, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Trust me. Okay. And I, man, I don't want to be talking about this shit in my podcast today. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be bringing people down with these kinds of things like every time I do a podcast like somebody else died and I'm dealing with it you know like but it's real man you know this is real this whole thing and ah oh, it's so awful so awful the only way this situation could have ended worse than it did is if like he would have hurt somebody else and then hurt himself that's the only way it could be worse other than that Wow, it's just, I can't believe it, you know? The story starts back in 1971 when we were born, 
and uh, it ends, you know, 2023, all of a sudden, by his own hand, in July, you know, I woke up one morning, I was working on pipe choir music for the new albums that I'm getting ready to release, and I got the call, you know. So, hopefully, having talked about it at least a little bit, it'll help me to kind of, like, move on with things. You know, get over this hurdle. But um, I would imagine, and I've kind of been saying this to my wife, you know, because I've obviously been thinking about it a lot, is, like, I don't think that I'll ever really get over this. And I do really kind of feel that, like, on the day that I die, like, if I live to be an old man, I will be thinking about this on that day. I mean, it's like, this will be with me for the rest of my life. I guess that's what I could talk about, really, right? I could expand on that idea that sometimes, you know, every single one of us, everybody that's listening to this, and myself included, everybody that we've ever known or met, You know, we all have these things that happen in our lives and they're big, you know, and they stay with us forever. You know, it's like you just don't know. Sometimes you're going to wake up one day and you're going to get bad news or good news even, you know, and it's going to change your life forever. It will never be the same again. And that doesn't happen to me too often. But, damn, it really has happened, you know? And uh, here I am, you know, in this emotional quagmire, you know, a tar pit that I'm stuck in. And I'm trying to get out of it, you know? I'm trying to be strong and come to some kind of conclusion about things so that I can at least set it down and move on in some way, you know, but I don't know, man. You know, sometimes things happen that are so big and so serious, you know, and it doesn't have to be a tragedy. It could be something great, but I've had some of those too, and I'm sure I'll have more in the future, you know, but I just don't understand that, how anybody could ever do that to themselves. You know, I have to be careful of what I say and how I say it here. Well, you know what? I don't know how anybody, anybody could commit suicide. I don't, I don't understand. You know, um, crisis is always temporary. You know, when something bad is happening to you, don't worry too much about it because it's going to end, you know? And when something is good, it's it's happening to you in your life, enjoy it because you know what? It's not going to last. Enjoy it while you have it, you know? Um, Good and bad. It's all the same, you know? It all passes. It all ends. So you have to, I guess, I have to, really learn how to manage these emotions and these feelings because it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the world for this person, this friend of mine, jackass, you know, that did this. How could he do this? How? How? Why? Why? What? Why? Why? Tomorrow is another day. Like, yeah, yeah, things suck, you know, sometimes, but to throw it all away? Come on! What a stupid thing to do, you know? And, oh, the heartache and the grief that is left behind. The people that loved him. Like me, I I loved him. Probably one of the only men other than my father that I've ever really loved, really, really loved, 
You know, I guess I love my brothers, but in some ways, I was even closer to this guy than I was with my own brothers. I mean, he was like the brother that I chose, you know? And uh, we were only a year apart in age, so that's probably part of it, you know? And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it just sucks. It just sucks. And if I were to do a podcast about anything else right now, it'd be bullshit. It'd be showbiz, you know? I would be acting like everything's fine, but you know what? It's not. I'm a real person. I'm not a personality, you know, a podcast personality or an influencer. You know, I'm a real person. And I'm going through real things right now. And I have been since July. We're already into March. Today is March 1st, you know, as I'm doing this podcast. And I look at the calendar and I'm like, oh my gosh. I mean, will this grief, this sadness I feel, will it go away? Is it going to go away? Damn, I hope it does. Because, man, you know, I, I don't want to live like that. You know what I mean? I, I don't want my life to be like that. I don't. I refuse, man. I refuse to have my life be like that. I have a good life and a happy life. I have a good marriage. I love my wife. My best friend, you know? Ah, and it's like, oh, this stuff. She's helping me through, you know? She's so good about it, so supportive, and just kind of, like, holding my hand, you know, while I'm going through this thing, but... Man. I suppose it's kind of like... You know, with this podcast today, it's kind of like an icebreaker, you know? I have just been, you know, know, paralyzed by this event. I've done podcasts since this happened, but, you know, maybe when the holidays hit, that came around, I kind of just stopped dead in my tracks with the podcast thing. Like, I just didn't want to talk about anything, you know? Like, ah, how much heartache, how much heartbreak can I endure, you know? I lost my parents. My First, I lost my dad. Then I lost my mom. Then we lost the house. You know, the house that I grew up in is gone. It was sold, you know? And that was like losing another person for me, you know? I'm a very... uh, not not superficial and not materialistic, but I put a lot of value on things like houses or, you know, anything. Like, things that have meaning in my life. I, I put value on that. There's, yeah, a dollar sign attached to it, but that's not what I care about. You know, that house was not about money. It was about my heart, right? And I lost my parents and I lost that. So I lost, like, three people. That's what it was like. And then after, you know, a couple months, three months or five months or something, then I lose, well, really, probably my best friend ever since childhood, my childhood best friend. And uh, how much, how much can I take? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, damn, it's just like, Oh, I don't know. If he was alive, I'd kill him. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck did you do that for? How could you do that? How could you do that? Now! You know, we're like, we're in our 50s. Like, it's not that bad. Life's not that bad. You know? And, oh, you know, people go, oh, you know, they make excuses and they go, uh. It's like, they're trying to console me. And they say things like, oh, this and that, you know, he's this and that's okay. And sometimes this happens and there's all that. And he was a good friend to me and oh, I loved him. And it's like, you know, you don't even know 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Shut up. You don't know. He was my best friend. My best friend. I loved him. He wasn't just a guy I knew. He wasn't just another guy. He was my best friend. And he was a relative. He was related to me. You know, and uh, it's like people try to console me, but it's like, shut up. You know, you, you don't know him. You don't know what you don't know. You just don't understand. You know, there's so much history. There's so much stuff we did together. I and mean, this is the guy who taught me how to shave. You know, it wasn't my dad. It wasn't my brothers or anybody else. It was him. He taught me how to shave. He taught me how to tie a tie. I mean, we were children and we were growing up together and he always did everything first. You know, I was a, a year younger, which, you know, when you're a kid, that's like a million years younger, you know, it matters. And he would do everything first in life. And um, we had our ups and downs. We had periods of time when we didn't really talk too much. We had periods of time where we didn't really talk at all. You know, long periods, because we would have a falling out and be stupid. And, you know, we finally, you know, would reconnect like we did. And, oh, it was like heaven, you know, to talk to him again. It's one of those friendships where you leave off, you know, on some bad note or something. But then, you know, months or even years later, you pick it up again. And it's like no time has passed. You know, your friendship is rekindled and everything goes back to the way that it's supposed to be. And that's kind of like what happened. You know, him and I kind of reconnected after my mom's funeral, you know, and uh, he didn't make it to my dad's funeral, but he made it to my mom's and uh, we reconnected, you know, and it was beautiful. It was great. And I was happy to talk to him again and now this happens you know and uh yeah here I am you know uh this idea okay this idea that if I'm lucky I'm gonna get older you know like I'm gonna age maybe if I'm lucky I'll live to be 90 right so I'll have like 40 years of life and that's a lot of music and a lot of songs and a lot of ice cream and a lot of pizza you know a lot of good coffee like I'm gonna take a sip of right now hang on but yeah so if I'm if I'm lucky I'm gonna get like another 40 years right and that idea of like that he's not going to be here with me like I didn't have to have him in my hip pocket you know we lived far away from each other geographically so it was okay he had his life there I have my life here and we could be friends and that's okay you know we didn't have to hang out every day he didn't have to like call me all the time you know that kind of thing it was just kind of nice to know that he was out there somewhere running around, you know? And at some point in the future, we would connect again and uh, he would make me laugh again, you know? He was one of the only people that I've ever known that could really make me laugh, okay? He knew how to make me really laugh. You know, a lot of people will be funny, they'll make jokes, and I'll giggle and I'll laugh. But he was different. The only person that I would say competes with him is my brother, Stephen, who is... Stephen is the funniest person that I've ever known, okay? But this person that I'm talking about today, who will remain nameless because I don't want any kind of, I don't know, any kind of bullshit from anybody about it. Anybody that's listening to this that knows me knows who I'm talking about anyway. So it doesn't matter. It's not important. I don't want to say his name. It's difficult for me to say it, you know. Um, sometimes, you know. And, uh, yeah, this, this time, this sadness will pass. 
doing this podcast right now, like I'm doing, will be part of that healing. Trust me. There's, like I've said it a thousand times on this podcast. It's like when something is on my heart or on my mind, as soon as I say it into this microphone, for some reason, it's like an exorcism. You know, like the 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 spirit comes out, that 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 feeling comes out and I set it down and I don't have to pick it up. So that's kind of, you know, my thinking with doing this podcast today. It's not like any other podcast I've ever done before, you know, because I'm not talking in hypotheticals or, you know, uh, thought experiments or anything like that. This is just hard reality, you know, and I'm up to my eyeballs in it, you know, it sucks, man. It sucks. It hurts. It hurts in places I didn't even know it could. You know, I just... It, there's so much of my life wrapped up in this guy. You know, memories from all different decades. Decades of my life. Just weddings and what? Uh, you know... One time I was in a band, you know, I was drumming in a band and he went with me on the road. (laughs) He he toured with me and it was the funnest, I mean, the funnest time I have ever had traveling with a band. We had so much fun. It was the happiest time probably in my life. You know, I had so much fun. You know, we had money. We were older. Uh, The band I was in was really good. And, uh, yeah, we were traveling in a van and all that, but it was fun, you know? And, um, like, other guys in the band were kind of distant from me anyway. They weren't really my best friends or anything. I was their drummer. It was a gig. It was a job. So taking a friend along with me... (laughs) Oh my goodness, Uh, the stories I could tell. I never had that much fun, ever, you know, with anybody, ever. And uh, that is the kind of thing that, you know, brings back a smile to my face. Or like, that's the good stuff, you know, that will hopefully, as time goes by, cancel out some of this negative stuff, you know. Um, I never loved another man as much as I loved him other than my father you know my father was very unique you know but he was my dad you know he was older than me and yeah you know I kind of had accepted the idea you know, like I, he, if things go well, he'll he'll die before I do. You know, I'm his kid. But with this guy, this friend of mine, this cousin, this relative, who taught me how to play guitar, who taught me how to swing a golf club, you know, he he taught me so many things. He taught me how to swim. I love swimming. I'm a fish out of water now. I love swimming. It's one of my favorite things to do. And he taught me how. He taught me how to play guitar, which is, you know, (laughs) what I do, you know. Um, And so it goes. You know, as I'm sitting here talking, I can kind of feel that it's kind of feeling a little bit better already. You know, just saying it, getting it out, you know. Um, But, you know, it is really kind of strange uh, to consider how much my heart is broken. Like, I didn't know that that could happen like that. I suppose in some ways it's good. You know, I'm not numb 
to this kind of stuff or, you know, blasé, passive. You know, it's like this stuff really, really, wow. You know, wow. Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe if you're listening to this podcast right now, maybe uh, you can relate or maybe in the future you will. You know, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Something like this might happen to you. I hope not. You know, I hope that nobody has to feel like this. But, oh, you know what? At the end of the day, at the end of all this, all of it, all of shit in life, you know, that happens to us, that's happened to me and it happened to him, I guess, is I just loved him. You know, I just miss him. I don't want to think about a future without him, but here we are. Here I am, you know. And here he is not. He is not here anymore. And I may never see him again, you know. And uh, the only time I'll ever laugh with him is in my memories now. And that really sucks. Because he was really, really funny to me, you know? So, yeah, it's a requiem, you know, for a friend. Uh, so, my happy innovators... You know, if you were wondering where I went or why I wasn't making a podcast, I was making music, you know, but I wasn't making a podcast. It was because I just couldn't. (laughs) I, I couldn't talk. I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk about it. But now that I've gone over that hurdle and I've broken the ice, you know, on this situation, uh, you know, maybe I'll get back on track with doing the talking thing, you know. And uh, if you have people that are in your life that you love, like you really do, maybe you guys are like fighting right now, you know, you know you're at odds with each other about something very stupid, because everything is stupid, um, especially nowadays. Man, put that shit down and get back to the people that you love. Just do it. Life is too short. It is. And uh, love is a great thing, you know. Uh, It's what we live for. You know, love is what we live for. And, uh, yeah. Maybe someday I'll write a book about it or something, you know? There's so much. It could never fit into a 40-minute or hour-long podcast. It couldn't. It's just so much. So, yeah, anyway. Sorry about the downer today. But uh, thanks for helping me out, you know? Helping me get out of this tar pit that I'm stuck in. Oh, man, it's real. It's real. I I can't believe it. I can't. When I think about it all now, uh, it's like a dream, like a bad dream. I I can't believe it. Um, that he would do that, you know. And then, oh well, you know, that maybe I I could have been a better friend. You know, those I was talking earlier about those questions that can't be answered. Because, you know, he's, like, gone now. But, like... Why didn't you talk to me? Why didn't you reach out to me? And tell me that you were thinking about that. How could you do that to me? After all these years. 50 years! 50 years! How could you do that to me? How could you do that to everybody? Man, 
It is the ultimate act of self. The ultimate act of selfishness. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, happy innovators. Remember, if you want to keep what you've got, you've got to give it away. Take it easy. Okay, happy innovators. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the podcast to hear some new music. And, uh, you know, considering how serious the tone of this podcast was today, um, I'm going to share with you something that's a little bit special, kind of like breaking my rules and doing something a little bit different. Um, But it's apropos to this podcast. I wrote a new song about all of this. It's not finished. It's not completely finished. Okay. But uh, it's pretty far along. I think far along enough to share it with you here. A little exclusive of the new pipe choir music, you know. And it's a song about this friend of mine that died you know and uh, so let's check it out it's a song called The Good Brother and it will be released on a future forthcoming Pipe Choir album and oh man you know if you're a Pipe Choir fan stay tuned because the next year or two there is going to be so much new Pipe Choir music and this is just one of them so here we go The Good Brother by Pipe Choir. Let's check it out.
Okay, happy innovators. Seeing as this is like kind of like the podcast where I'm breaking all the rules, uh, I'm going to give you some more music today. Um, and I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation too about the PC3 album, Days Away. Okay. Um, you know, I had mentioned in the podcast earlier that this cousin, this friend of mine, my best friend, had gone on tour with me with one of the bands that I was playing in. And uh, around that same time, um, the band I was in, my cousin, some girlfriends and everybody, you know, wives and girlfriends, we all decided that we were going to take a vacation to the Outer Banks of North Carolina, a place called Corolla Beach. And uh, we were going to rent a beach house for about a week and just hang out there together for a week. And uh, it was probably, you know, one of the best times I've ever had in my life. And it was like uh, the first time I ever went to the ocean, really, with my friends. You know, not with my family, but with my friends. And um, it was anything goes You know, it was a lot of fun, a lot of, you know, partying, you know, everybody just having a great time on the beach for a week. And uh, it was on this trip, okay, that I had like a really huge revelation, okay, out on the beach by myself one day, you know, and, um, It was a spiritual turning point for me in a lot of ways. And I'm not going to talk too much about that because, you know, it's very personal and it was very real and deep. And, you know, many years after this, I wrote a song called The Water of Fire or Singing to the Sea. And... That song was kind of like my broaching this topic of this day I had, this moment that I had on the beach, you know. And my best friend, my cousin, was with me. He wasn't on the beach with me that day, but he was on that trip with me. And I was with him, okay. So I went out on the beach. I had this really amazing experience by myself. I came back to the house and he was there and we had dinner and the party started, you know, that kind of thing. So he was with me, but not with me at this moment. Anyway, the point is I did the water of fire or singing to the sea. And, uh, that song was kind of like abstract and, you know, whatever, but it was one of the first honest wave songs I ever did. I think it was maybe eight minutes or 10 minutes or something or, I forget exactly, maybe more than that. And um, 
and it was about this trip that I took to the Outer Banks you know, Corolla Beach right so you know July 2023 happens and I lose this friend and he's gone and I'm processing it and this album days away starts coming out of me you know, all this music and these lyrics and these this idea of paying tribute to him and to this experience I had and to this vacation that I had you know days away days away from everything days away from normal life and the world and you know the problems of everyday whatever right taking days away going far away from home and far away from everything even you know, you know conceptually in my mind like just cutting off from the world just for a week you know and since then you know I've been on vacations I've been to the beach and all kinds of stuff I've had great vacations and great times with friends and all kinds of things but this particular trip this particular story was different than all those other times since that vacation. Okay, this was the first, and it was different, and it impacted me so much that it resonated throughout my whole musical career from that point forward. Okay, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? How many times have I made songs about the ocean <laughs> you know like it just comes out well you know I started to make these songs you know Days Away um, Neon Nebula Earth uh, what else Windswept uh, there's more coming by the way I'm not going to reveal it all now but the point is is that I made a whole PC3 album out of it you know I took the idea of the water of fire or singing to the sea and I extrapolated that out into like what maybe maybe like six eight or ten songs you know uh, some of which are released some of which are yet to be released but all this material came from this one experience and uh, and like I said it's like a tribute to him and a tribute to that experience that I had, very profound experience I had on the beach by myself, alone, and it was one of those God moments, you know, it was not between me and anyone else, it was just me and my creator, you know, speaking to me in many ways. You know, just kind of speaking to my heart. Okay? And it was the uh, seed for all this music, you know? And uh, so this this is the tribute. This is it. This is uh, the best way I could probably honor this friend of mine, how much I loved him. Because if I had words to say it, then I wouldn't have loved him enough. I mean... I can't come up with all the words that I feel, you know? So I'll do it through song. I'll do it in music. And, you know, it sounds corny, I guess. But that's how this stuff works, you know? At least for me. So I'm going to share with you now that you have a little bit of understanding about PC3 Days Away, you know, the album. Um, I'll share with you uh, the song that I'm the most proud of off the album and by far without question in my opinion okay maybe the best video I've ever made for any song ever okay so to cut the suspense here uh, I'm going to share with you PC3 
Days Away, the title track from the Days Away album, but not only is this my favorite track, the music and everything, but like I said, the video, I looked at it and I thought, I just hit the bullseye. So maybe you'll kind of agree with me. I guess I can give you a little bit of an explanation, you know, because the video is really a shot of a woman walking on the beach, you know, but that woman could be like a metaphor for me, okay? Because I did that same thing, you know? I walked that beach. I walked the line of the ocean and the land, and there was nobody there. I was alone, and I'm an artist. <laughs> you know, like I was taking it all in, you know? And if you notice in the video, you know, this landscape that this woman is walking on is very almost identical to where I was and what it was like. I mean, there was nobody. And I like how in this video that you're about to see, um, well, one, each shot is technically like a painting. It could be an oil painting framed, but I love how it's all beauty not just the sand and the water and the sky, but the wind and the woman that's walking. You know, she's beautiful. And, and, if you notice, she's carrying a camera. You know? And I love that idea of the artist, you know, going into this environment on the hunt for inspiration. That's what I did. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, like that, that is what I do. I go out into the world with a camera. I'm not literally holding a camera and taking pictures, but I go out into the world with this camera in my head. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you watch this video, it's like a metaphor. It's like this thing that, you know, I want every day. I want to be there. I don't want to be here. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be uh, in a snowy, cold uh, environment. I want to be in a place where the wind is warm and there's nobody around. and It's just gorgeous, man. You know, and if I can't go do that today, like right now, I can't go there because I'm here. I can't go there. Um, I can at least watch this video and just lose myself in it for a little while. Hopefully, hopefully, my happy innovators, you'll be able to do the same thing. You'll be able to watch this video and get it, you know? And if you can do that, then you get me. That's what I'm all about. So here we go. PC3, days away. Let's check it out. Peace out, everybody. And thanks for your patience.